I'm Tom Anderson, and this is part three of my simulation series, Transient Simulation in LT Spice. And I'm going to switch to Time Domain Simulation. Select the schematic window and edit this voltage source here and turn it into a transient source. I'm going to use a sine wave. And my sine wave I'm going to put at one kilohertz. So it should be at about, uh, so there's one kilohertz and an amplitude of one volt. And so I'm going to OK that. And now you can see this same, the same element here has actually kind of like two different models. It's got a sine one and an AC one. And so depending on what kind of analysis I do, it'll plug the different parameters. I'm going to move this over here. Uh, this is my simulation command. And now I'm going to right click on this and change the simulation type. And so I'm going to go to transient and I'm going to say a stop time. Now, when I'm doing an AC analysis, that's the steady state analysis. And I want to compare the transient analysis to the AC steady state. But when the transient first starts, it's not steady state yet. And so how long does it take for the transient to die out? Well, it kind of depends on your circuit. But for this type of circuit, 10 cycles should be plenty. So 10 cycles of 1 kilohertz is, let's see, it's 1 millisecond per cycle for 1 kilohertz. And so that would be 10 milliseconds. So I'm going to say 10 M. I can take the defaults for everything else and click OK. And so now I have this transient simulation here. Now this is um, this shows the transient because you can see that when it first starts, it starts at uh, zero, and so the first cycle goes up just about to 180 millivolts. But then it it after a while decays out, and you get this steady state out here. That steady state part is what the AC analysis is simulating. Now this is just simulating at one frequency, but we get to watch it trace out the time domain. And if we look at the input, uh, I can graph the input also, we see it's larger. It should be about 10 times larger because it is about 20 dB down in the filter. I can compare them a little better by taking this number here. And if I right click it, it'll give me a chance to change this expression, which I can multiply by 10 and click OK. And now I'm graphing V out times 10. In the steady state, I get just about the same amplitude. And I also notice that there's a little bit of a lag. And in fact, uh, I can turn on the marker and, and see what that lag is. So I have a lag here. And right when this is at the peak, you notice that this is at uh, close to zero. And when this is at the peak here, this is close to zero. So that corresponds to a 90 degree phase shift. And let's see if the, if the AC analysis says that the output lags by 90 degrees. Uh, so I'm going to go back to my AC. And so I'm going to go back here. And I'm going to edit the, the, I'm going to give it an AC analysis. And I'm going to click OK on that. And now it becomes an AC analysis. And I'm going to run my, have my little running man again. You can see that uh, here's the, this da dashed line here is the phase of V out times 10. So you can see it's about 20, 20 dB now at low frequencies because I've multiplied it by 10. So there's my, my 20 dB number. I can change that. So if I take this take out the factor of 10. Uh, yeah, now it's 0 dB. And I can see that by a kilohertz, I'm just about up to 90 degrees. And I'm about 20 dB down. So if I click, I guess I click up here. Yeah, I got a, um, I get the marker here right at a kilohertz. I have 4. This cursor has a little number here. So I have a cursor 1 and a cursor 2 at this 85 degrees, almost 90, and magnitude of minus 20 dB. 